Hi guys, Gilliam Elliott here with an educational video about medical tourism. Today, I wanna to go over five ways to reduce risk and liability as a medical tourism facilitator. I wanted to cover this topic because we frequently get emails of people interested in different risk mitigation tools. And so I wanna cover this topic. So if you have this same question of how to reduce risk and liability, hopefully this video is helpful for you. So the first point I wanna cover is avoiding high risk clients. And the best way to do this is by uh, sending them medical history forms. So when you get a new inquiry through your website or somebody reaches out through you through social media and they're interested in having you coordinate their medical tourism trip, the best thing you can do is send them a medical history form, have them fill this form out. It's a very detailed form and it just ensures that they are a good candidate for the procedure that they're seeking. This is a document that we provide to our members and it's a part of our membership program. Um, and also you might be able to find one as well in other places, but we provide it uh, to our members. So that's the, that's the first step is to provide them with a medical history form and have them fill it out. But the number one way you can mitigate your risk as a medical tourism facilitator is by having solid medical tourism contracts. This is the most effective way to avoid litigation and risk as a medical tourism facilitator. And the right medical tourism contract is going to clearly outline what you're responsible for as a facilitator and what you're not responsible for as a medical tourism facilitator. It should also outline the possible risk as well as how they'll be handled. So your contract needs to go over, you know, letting the patient know that there's no guarantees, meaning as a facilitator, you can't guarantee any outcomes. It also needs to spell out to them the potential risk as well as the benefits and then have them sign an initial on each page. And that's a binding agreement between you and your potential client. And that way, if anything does go unplanned, they can clearly look at the contract and see who's responsible for what. And you can make sure as a facilitator, you're in the best position possible. And the last point I'll go over is having a dispute resolution in your contract. And a dispute resolution just means that before litigation happens, you and the disputing party, meaning the patient or the medical tourist, will have to have a third party come in and mitigate, meaning they'll try to get you guys to come to some sort of middle ground and get you guys to come to some, some sort of agreement before you drag out a lawsuit. And so you want to make sure you have all this in your contract. So if you have that dispute resolution, that means that nothing can take place, no litigation, uh, no lawsuits, anything like that, until some outside party comes in, sits you down in the room and sits the medical tourist down the room and have you guys just have a conversation, get you guys in the same room and have dialogue. I mean, this Having a dispute resolution in your contract really is a big deal because a lot of times if you guys can both sit down and have a conversation, there's no need for litigation and both parties can walk away feeling whole. But these are five basic ways to make sure that you're reducing risk and liability as a medical tourism facilitator. And I want to thank you for watching this short video. But if you guys are looking to get template contracts and you guys want to protect and safeguard your medical tourism agencies, I'm going to leave a link below to our contracts as well as my contact information. But thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.